Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Dusty Thunder here with another Reddit story for you. This one's a spicy one, though. It comes from Oh No Consequences and is titled, Am I the astronaut for filing for divorce because my husband over-tightens all the jar lids? His over-tightening jar lids has been an issue since he was just visiting at my house when we were dating. First, it started with just things he used, and then over time, it became every damn glass jar with a metal lid. He tightened them so much that I couldn't open them without assistance. It wasn't a huge deal if he was here, but if I was alone, it was so annoying. More times than I can count, I've opened a new jar of something because I couldn't get the jar open. Oh, got it. Yeah. It's been a recurring cycle over the past five years. It's just a thing that would escalate until I had a major meltdown and freaked out, screaming, frustrated, and seemingly crazy because it's just a lid. Then it would get better for a while. Then it would slowly become an issue again, just getting worse and worse until I reach a breaking point again. Sometimes I literally feel insane for being so upset over jar lids. He initially claimed that he did it to keep the food fresh. After many arguments about it and my insistence that I don't believe it keeps anything fresh, even if it does make things last longer, I don't care if it means that I can't eat my freaking food when I want. I'll just replace things that go bad because they are closed normally. Then the excuse was that it's a habit. So about a month ago, my husband had a family emergency and had to travel out of state for 10 days. First day he's gone, I discover a jar I can't open. I was annoyed and was going to the store to buy new pickles when the neighbor said hi and to let him know if I needed anything while the soon-to-be ex is out of town. I said, wait here and go and went and got the jar and he opened it. The next day, I saw him outside and asked him to open another jar. He offered to come open all the jars. I agreed, and he came in, and he went to the fridge and opened all the jars except two, which he couldn't get open. I thanked him profusely and told him I'd bake some of his favorite cookies later in the week. He laughed and said it was no big deal, and after confirming that I wouldn't be upset if the remaining two jars were destroyed in his attempt to open them, he took them to his garage to open them one way or another. He said that he's heard me screaming of... <laughs> He said that he's heard me screaming about over-tightened jar lids a few times over the years and that he's really pondered if it was if I was crazy or if my husband was really over-tightening the jar lids. He said, you know, this was intentional. It was every jar, and I'm sure he doesn't regularly use hot pepper paste or mango puree or any of your other fancy cooking stuff. Then he held up the two jars he couldn't open and said, I don't know why he's doing it, but it wasn't an accident. Huh. After he left, I locked the door and sat on my kitchen floor and cried. Then I felt hot and lightheaded. I vomited in the trash can. My chest hurt. It crossed my mind that I might be having a heart attack. I thought about calling an ambulance, but sat back down on my kitchen floor, instead okay with just dying if it was a heart attack. <laughs> just like, if it takes me, it takes me at that point. Later, the neighbor came back with the open jar of hot fudge and apologized that he couldn't save the figs. He said he broke the jar trying to get it open. He also apologized for what he said about my husband doing it on purpose. I assured him it was okay. I couldn't sleep that night. Tossed and turned all night. I called off of work. By 10 a.m., I realized that I couldn't stay married anymore, and I made an appointment with a lawyer for the next day. There are literally no other issues. No cheating, no abuse. We had a good sex life. Both have good jobs, nice house, no financial issues. He was absolutely blindsided when he came home and I told him I wanted a divorce. He still won't admit that he tightened the lids on purpose. He suggested we go to marriage counseling, but I refused. There is no point. I just literally can't get past the goddamned jar lids. I still feel a little bit crazy about that. I have no idea why he would tighten every jar lid so tightly that I couldn't open it. He's given me no reason. He still won't even admit that he did it on purpose. But the hot pepper paste is in the back of the fridge. I use it only when I make Indian food. It's behind other things. He's never used it. It's nothing you could put in food without cooking it. The pepper paste could not have been an accident. It couldn't. Maybe he put mango puree on his toast or in his oatmeal, but the pepper paste couldn't have been an accident. That's what my life comes down to. I'm getting a divorce because the lid on my hot pepper paste was over-tightened. If it had been every damn jar except that one, I could try. I could, I could have a sliver of doubt. I could do something else, but I just can't get past the hot pepper paste. Most of our friends and families either think that I'm crazy or an asshole. What do you think? And here to give us some feedback on this, the spicy pepper paste candy thunder. Oh my god, it's candy thunder. Did you, did you just call me spicy pepper paste? I did. Uh your spicy candy. This one, I there's like some jars that you can open with like the help of that like jar opener thing that grips the top. And then there's some that you can't. But the fact that he did this to a jar that he has never used to me says that he was doing it on purpose and that's why she's divorcing him but i 
whether he was doing it to make him need her, whether he was doing it for freshness, whether he was doing it for whatever reason, the fact that she asked him to stop is reason enough for him to stop. If he cared about her, cared about her sanity, because obviously this was something that was making her feel crazy, not being able to open the jars, and he still did it. He went and found a jar that he didn't even use and tightened it down so that she couldn't open it so that she would, what, need him to yeah. open jars? Like, Why? Grow that, the fuck up, that's dude. the point. Why? You have a problem. You go to counseling. Everything else in your marriage is fine. Your wife asked you to stop doing this and you kept doing it. And you kept doing it to the point where you did it to every single jar in your house. I would be flaming pissed. I would be <laughs> yeah, you livid. Would. Yeah, you would. Like this would make me, this would be enough for divorce. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But hang on. Because like we talked about at the very beginning of the story or like right before we started reading this story for a long time, you thought I was over tightening Navy's cups and it ended up being... Temperature change and a matter of pressure because they were emptied out that tightened them. I was not over tightening them. What if the fridge is like you the fridge is not them. working correctly or something? I'm saying there is there is like there is an anomaly chance. Point zero 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 one is still a chance that it could be something that is like crazy out of there. Because if the mm. cup thing drove you nuts to the point where you were like, I can't do this anymore, and then we find out years later that it was other environmental factors that did this thing. It's possible. It probably is him being a controlling asshole. I just don't know why. There's a path here where it's like. Because he needs her to need him. Yes. Like that's that's why he's, I mean, in my mind, that's why. If it's intentional, that's the only thing that makes sense is, is so that she'll never leave him because she needs him, right? And maybe he learned that from his dad. Maybe, I don't know, some kind of bullshit tactic he learned from someone. But I think over the next year or so, I hope we get updates from Opie. Because yeah. I think she's going to start noticing things that were other factors, not just the jars. I agree. I, if he's doing that, he's doing other stuff to make her need him, and she just hasn't noticed it and yet. And to make her feel weak, like she can't yes. do things on yes. her own. Yep. And to me, that that form of manipulation, like do, the fact that she has brought this up again and again and again to the point where she's having uncontrollable meltdowns, to me, says that she has gone to like frustration, resentment. She's in indifference. Like she's like, I'm f-ing done. I'm done with this crap. I have talked to you and talked to you and talked to you and you won't stop. Yeah. And I, I cannot see this happening over and over again. Like something gets open and then you go back to it in their fridge magically making something tight again. Like I can't, That's I can't imagine that being a thing. Like I can't imagine this being anything other than him tightening them, reaching into the fridge and tightening them so tight because there's, there's tight and then there's. <laughs> Getting a wrench out and tightening it down, and that's what I feel. Mechanic, like mechanical yeah, tightening. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. Just step you up. Oh, Just sorry. A little bit. That's the gravity. I, don't, I, if your marriage was in jeopardy, if you saw me freaking out about something that was causing me so much pain, you would do whatever you could do to eliminate that pain. Right. You would care about me enough to stop doing it. And ditto. Like I, if I was doing something that caused you pain, like. I would try to fix it. Yeah. H bear saw your comment back there. The fact that he's not seeking a solution means that it's intentional. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that makes sense. If he's, if he's not trying to solve the problem at all, he's just like, Oh, I'm just a habit, I guess. Right. What does this guy do on like Tuesday nights after you go to bed? He's like, Oh, it's time to tighten all the jars. And he like goes and sets yeah. a little stool up in front of the fridge. And he's like, Wah! don't, Wah! I would set up a fucking camera. Ooh, a he, fridge camera? A fridge camera. Oh. Or a kitchen camera or something. People do strange shit. We have an edit. Look at this. I found Reddit it. sleuthing skills yielded some fruit. Okay, here's the edit to add. Well, after defending myself in this post, I realized there are some other things that are also circumstantial that also weigh into my decision. I had to move my office from my dining nook to a locked room because he was using my workspace on days I went into the office. That was no big deal, except he was moving important documents that I need for work. He denied moving anything and swore he was just setting up his laptop and maybe using my printer. I started taking pictures of my desk before I left for work and things were being moved. He was the only one home. He totaled my car twice in five years, even though he rarely drives it. The second time was right after we married, and he put a lot of pressure on me to use the insurance money to pay off his car instead of replacing mine because I don't drive a lot and sometimes bike to work. Oh, isolation and dependence, right? Ah, 
We live in the suburbs and there is no public transportation. He proposed that I could just use his car when I needed to, but I really wanted to continue having my own car. As soon as we married, he was pressuring me to have a child. His plan for childcare was for me to watch the baby while working. I wanted to save a year of childcare expenses before we talked about a baby. He didn't want to. I just felt weird about it. So I got an IUD to make sure we didn't have an accident. He was angry. Again, nothing proves any ill intent on his part, but all of those things just unsettled me. I think that does prove some ill intent, does it not? It proves a pattern of isolation and control. It proves a pattern of his attempt to create dependence. Good gravy. So am I the astronaut for filing for divorce because my husband over-tightens jar lids? Nah, but it's not just jar lids. He was trying to over-tighten his control on your life. He wanted to make you completely dependent. I, I legitimately, I'm, I'm expecting updates that are like, hey, I just found out that this thing, uh, that th this thing that used to be at this height has been raised three inches. So it would be harder for me to reach. That's the kind of shit that I'm expecting. Little stuff. That would just make her more dependent on him. Good gravy. The jars were a metaphor. There you go. Also, not even more dependent, but more um, like it's these little things that he knows that he's doing, but denies doing um, that make her feel almost like crazy. Like, mm. like that make not you feel. Not almost. She feels absolutely like, crazy. Like she feels like these things are happening. He denies them happening. There's no one else in the house. And so it makes her feel like she's going crazy. And she keeps getting in this cycle until she explodes again. And then again, he makes her feel like she's exploding for no reason. And he's not doing any of this stuff. That's a, that's emotional abuse. That is gaslighting, emotional bullshittery. The grooming that he's doing to make his emotional abuse easier is, is the wild part to me. So like the, what mm -hmm. he's doing with the jars, what he's doing with everything else to make her less independent um, is a, a long con to make her ultimately feel like she's gone crazy. So he does have total control over her. He's like, he's like, yeah, you know, honey, sometimes you think, see things that aren't there. Sometimes blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's going to become a big enough deal where he's like, let me control everything for you. And she's like, okay. And then uh, she's got her IUD removed. She's got a child and she's being completely controlled. Would he have messed with her birth control if it wasn't an IUD? She got the one form of birth control that he can't condoms and birth like condoms and pills you can mess with but IUDs you could not he's got she got the one thing you can't tighten the lid on you know what I mean the one thing you can't mess with there you go that was jarring Dustin <laughs> or you know it doesn't matter now none of this matters now because she's decided to leave yes. him already but if she was continuing to sniff this out and try to collect evidence I mean like um an electrified jar like a trick jar lid you know what I mean like a something that would shock the shit out of him if he tried to twist it you know what I would do? Something to this that guy? would explode out of the jar? Anoyatrons. Anoyatrons? Oh, no, honey, I don't hear anything. No. Do you hear something? Oh. Confetti shit, confetti you must bombs. Be going crazy. Yes. Do you like how that feels? Oh, you don't? My bad. Uh, you know what? It doesn't sound like he's even left yet. They just he just found out that he was getting a divorce. I, uh, hope, I so, hope she goes through with it. So throw some anoyatrons in his shit as he's packing it up and taking it with him. Um there and you then, go. yeah, but hide it in like under the sole of a shoe or like underneath the ins insole of a shoe or something somewhere. It's going to be hard to find. Put it in that car that he wanted. He wanted OP to pay off. There you go. 